turned on some of its wettest weather for the occasion of the opening of Parliament by the Governor-General, Sir Bernard Tryber. Senior representatives of the three services were present. While some of the crowd waited in the rain for a second glimpse of His Excellency, the Governor-General delivered the traditional speech from the throne, outlining the programme of work to be dealt with by Parliament this session, after which he and Lady Freiburg returned directly to Government House. a member of the Society of Miniaturists is the ambition of every miniature painter. The only woman in New Zealand to have received this distinction is Mrs. Elsie White of Christchurch. Mrs. White, who has been painting since she was 12, was taught by visiting masters from overseas. As far as possible, she works from sittings, but she usually makes a rough sketch as well to enable her to carry on working when her model is not available. Ordinary oil colours are used for this type of work, but instead of canvas, the miniaturist uses ivory, which imparts a softer quality to the colours. Metal or vellum have often to be substituted for ivory, which is scarce and costly. The choice of the most suitable design of frame for each painting is of great importance. Mrs White's subjects have included many distinguished persons. The photograph today has stolen the miniature's popularity, but a few artists like Mrs. White are devoting their talents to keeping this dignified art form alive. A Christchurch sculptress who has received no training of any description is Mrs. Mary Buick. Four years ago, while suffering from a badly poisoned finger, Mrs. Buick discovered by chance her amazing talent for modeling in clay. Since then, she's completed nearly 100 figures with a facility that many a labouring professional would envy. She uses homemade tools, and many of her earlier works were completed with one hand only. Attributing her gift to inspiration alone, Mrs. Buick uses no models or guiding marks, and never knows how a figure will turn out until it's completed. She does no research into national or period dress, though her models are remarkably authentic. These are a few of Mrs. Buick's completed works. In spite of requests from all parts of New Zealand, she refuses to sell any of them and has no wish to make any personal profit or reputation from her gift. Mrs. Buick also works in marble, but most of her work is in clay. As each figure is finished, it goes to a local pottery for firing and then joins the others on their shelves in their creator's home, making a unique collection. The Post and Telegraph Department has taken over part of Trentham Army Camp for its chief New Zealand training school. Army buildings have been converted into classrooms for 100 trainees who also live at the camp. Some are new entries in the service and others are seeking higher qualification or promotion in their present jobs. Everybody gets a thorough training in both theoretical and practical work. This mechanician's class is studying the working of an automatic exchange to see what happens when a telephone number is dialed. A toll room for training operators has a dummy switchboard specially wired for the purpose. Girls learn the correct procedure for handling and clocking toll calls and operating manual exchanges. The class learns under working conditions and experienced supervisors are in charge of the training. Calls are originated from the other side of the room by girls who act as subscribers. Most of the girls are from country districts and their course lasts six weeks. With the post office handling 22 and a half million toll calls a year, there's a busy time ahead of them. In the Morse School, telegraphists train under conditions similar to those in the telegram room of a large post office. 
The P&T department handles 7 million telegrams a year and a high standard is expected from the operators. Each man is trained to hear his own receiver above the general din. The same class also learns teleprinter operating, the more modern method of transmitting and receiving telegrams. As the message is typed out, the teleprinter punches it as a series of holes in a paper strip. When the punch tape is fed into the transmitter, the holes are converted into electric impulses which travel by line to the receiver. This may be hundreds of miles away, but for instructional purposes it's on the same machine. The impulses select the correct letter which is typed on a strip of paper ready for gumming to a telegram form. Outdoor classes are held for P&T linemen. This class, on a refresher course, is learning a new way to make post holes. After a hole has been drilled five feet six deep, a stick with small charges of jet ignite spaced along it is pushed carefully down. The fuse is lit and everyone gets well clear. Some of the dirt falls back in the hole, but it's loose and will be easily removed. The same method is used for blasting trenches for laying cables and for felling trees to make a path for overhead wires through bush country. The plugs of gelignite are forced home in holes drilled in the trunk. The amount of gelignite used depends on the size of the tree and the state of the wood. class also does pole maintenance work and pole wiring high above the ground. Well, above the ground anyway, in a three-acre area allotted to them at the camp. The poles were erected by previous classes and the preliminary instruction is done indoors. Many different types of cable are used by the P&T department for carrying messages under the sea, overhead or under the ground. This underground cable contains 2,000 wires and is one reason why cable jointing is a highly skilled trade. The busiest man at the school is the chef. With all the trainees living at the camp, his work is never done. There's always more than one choice available at mealtime, and the standard has to be high enough to keep the younger people from missing mother's cooking. A game of table tennis is a favorite evening pastime for the men, and the school recreation hall is big enough for a fortnightly dance. There's also a large lounge for studying or a nice quiet game of cards. Everything possible has been done to make the new training center a pleasant place to work and live in. When the trainees leave the school and go to their new jobs, they're fully qualified to take their place without any further instruction. The new training scheme is helping to ease the serious shortage of staff and is providing trained personnel well qualified to keep up the post and telegraph department's reputation for efficiency and service.